Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and thank you for joining. Um, good Mike. morning. Hey, Alex. Rosen. Oh, hi, Michael. Here you are. No, there you yep. are. Okay. Now I can see you. <laughs> so many places. <laughs> so many places, exactly. Here, here he is. Good, yeah. good morning, Hello, Michael. everyone. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining uh, Discovering Neo4j OrDB with Michael and myself. Uh, I hope you uh, had a good Monday so far. If it's uh, early for you, good morning. If it's if it's a later session for you, then yeah, you're into the week Hello. already. Well, while, yeah. while we are just getting used to it, it that it's Monday again. <laughs> exactly, it's Monday again, and uh, yeah. So uh, tonight we actually didn't sleep so well. My daughter and I. Uh, uh, we were like laying awake home half oh, no. tonight, and that was kind of not so easy uh, to get her to sleep. Uh, yeah. So no, only in the morning, good. kind of, uh, she fell asleep. So uh, yeah, it's a it's a Monday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then um, you finally fall asleep, and then the the, the alarm goes off. Yeah, which exactly. Is like ten exactly. minutes later, and it's like Ugh. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I actually uh, went for a run uh, late last night. So I think I got home at around one or half past midnight or something like that. Uh, because I tried to find the, the comet that's on the sky, but it was too cloudy. So there were some stars visible. Ah, okay. but, um, I thought that's Southern Hemisphere, no? No, it's, uh, I think, between the uh, Big Dipper and uh, Cassiopeia, uh, mm -hmm. so which are visible here. Yeah, And you see it in the northern sky, uh, okay. basically. But it was kind of so the, the moon was visible and a bunch of stars but it was too cloudy to to see everything so I see. I'll okay continue yeah. to try to see it uh something it was it was super cloudy here as well though we we were lucky i i went to um, go country cross country skiing yesterday oh, morning nice. uh, and we went uh drove down to the uh, to the to the alps um here from Munich, and it was uh, in the morning. We arrived there super, super early. It was minus eleven or so degrees, so super cold. <laughs> but it, um, but it was sunshine, so it was super nice. And then we, when okay. we, when we left back back home early afternoon, it was already getting overcast again. So I think we, mm -hmm. we made the right decision to go there early, before uh, the many people and before the the weather turned again. So it was 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 very fun. It was good, good nice. good session. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. Uh, let's let's dive in though. Let me get this out of the way. So yeah, this is discovering OrDB uh, with um, with fun data set. So we we pick a data set um, and uh, go go over it. So I'll I'll do a quick recap before we dive into the data um, this week. Um, so we have. Um, uh, every every week another data set we we look into uh, and and explore a little bit with with oradb free um oradb free is the the free version uh, that we offer as a database as a service for uh, for everybody so uh, you can um try neo4j oradb um whenever you like uh, through the sort of system uh, just re register for the with the link I, I put in chat and then from there you you, you you're good to go um with uh, today's session um, we have uh, an interesting data set it's the corpus of German federal law that Michael Michael found mm -hmm. so the the um, that well I don't know that Germany basically makes this available as as part of their open data strategy I guess so they will, um, we'll post this data. They they maintain this data, so this is like a regular thing. So we we'll, we we'll show it in a second, um, and um, yeah, from there we, we we see what we can do. It's a lot of data, I think. So maybe we have to we have to shrink it a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. So uh, we need to look at the data and and see yeah. uh, what it is and is it useful. Actually, I was talking to my wife this morning. She's a lawyer. Yeah, and she huh. said, from her perspective, what they published there in the in the data set is not so interesting because what's missing is kind of how the laws refer to each other. So they basically have the structure of the law uh, published. But I found from the same uh, group that they also published court proceedings of the International um, Court of Justice. Uh, so you at least have like cases and who uh, basically... Um, uh, who kind of puts whom in front of the court, and so that might be more interesting uh, as such. So, but we can look at both and and see how how it goes. Uh, yeah. As such. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, so it, it started and... off. It started off with this 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 page that 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 collects the, this also. Yeah, here this this mastodon post. Uh, yeah, so so I saw this mastodon post when uh, when I pinged Alex and said, hey, you know, this looks very much like a, like a graph to me, right? So mm. uh, so this is actually a process of uh, capturing the data, and uh, I looked it up. Um, so it's on Zenodo. Uh, Zenodo is a platform from CERN actually. Uh, that hosts a lot of different uh, data sets as such, right? So it's probably also something for us to explore in the future if you can find other interesting data sets. So it's not just legal. They have lots of stuff like election data, uh, uh, electrical data, stuff basically, right? So it's basically a data hosting platform from CERN and um, and so and so we can, oops. Can you see, uh, see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. <clears throat> so uh, from CERN and 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 so there's a lot of uh, data available. So from that perspective, it will be really uh, interesting in the future yeah. also uh, for us yeah. to explore other data sets as well. And um, so and and the guy actually uh, publishes all his uh, research on on Zenodo as well. So he did the German federal laws uh, into one corpus. He then posted also uh, about the uh, International Court of Justice laws here. Uh, so if you open this one. And uh, by the way, we are not lawyers, so neither Alex nor I nope. <laughs> have any law degrees. <laughs> so don't take anything. This is not legal advice or so. And we're just messing around with a data set and yeah. uh, try to model it. But if you have comments or things where we uh, messed it up, then uh, please let us know. And this is really just exploring a data set from a law person's uh, law, lay person's perspective, not from a law person's perspective. Yeah, person's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's only one letter yeah. difference, right? So, yeah. <laughs> and actually, it's <laughs> almost in the next letter in the alphabet, uh, law and lay. Um, so, um, so here he also published. Um, so for the for the German uh, ones, he published basically. Where is it here? Um, he published, uh, this is also all in German, right? Uh, basically all the laws uh, and their, their structure and format as CSV, PDFs and, and, and so on. So detailed uh, uh, data, but what was also published as part of the German ones was visualization. So for instance, you had something like, um, uh, this is the general law, the uh, Bürgerliches Gesetzbuch. Uh, like the core law of Germany, basically. And you see like the structure of the law in different visualizations, basically. Right? So they have like a bunch of different visualizations. They also publish GraphML and, and, and some other uh, formats, um, edge lists uh, for, these, for these laws. So the edge lists are pretty simple. It's really from to um, breakdown, oh, okay. right? So it's not like very fancy. Um, but the, the edge list is something that we could import directly as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you wanted to, like here in is the um, big eBay edge list is basically to each uh, subset. And, uh, adjacency matrix, uh, matrices, but there's also like metadata, uh, for instance, like here, there's like Docker D and some abbreviation, uh, the title, and then uh, substructure when it was created, how long it was valid, and 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 stuff like that. So I'll I'll probably start actually with the international laws, and then if you have some time, then we will look into the German ones. But I, I think these German ones are more like the structure of the law, which is I think probably less interesting from an uh, okay. international yeah. perspective. I mean, they have really funny names, right? Like Familiennamenänderungsgesetzvorlage, something like that. And, and, yeah. <laughs> don't don't, don't like the, make us translate this. <laughs> uh, Verordnung für Maßstäbe der Ermittlung. Im Steinkohlebern. I guess they like the coal, yeah. coal uh, like, company sizes, <laughs> whatever. Uh, yeah. Or like the, the fishing, uh, and or here there's like. A, a tin, um, tin melting <laughs> legalization. It's, it's kind of ridiculous if you think about what. what yeah, you need a law for everything. I mean, everything, everything. Yeah. yeah. So it's um, so it's interesting. Probably more from from a, from a fun perspective to make fun of German law. 
but the uh, international, <laughs> international court of justice um, <clears throat> has also open open access and 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 you can get access to 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 publish data and what he did is extracted basically the metadata from from that so which cases were there uh, who uh, basically uh, appealed against whom and uh, so he basically took all the so they published everything as pdfs which is not so really good for for processing uh, but what he did was um he did run an ocr system um actually i think this was the one where he also was this one where he used an ocr system with an a language model on top so basically to resolve issues and fix issues basically with the trained language model on top so on, on a legal um base basically so which is kind of interesting and then he published both the pure metadata uh the metadata here but also the full text so uh, if he, someone is interested there's also like the the full text of all the cases basically in in here as well right so that's that's kind of interesting uh to see in the csv as well and so what I thought we can do is at least look at the metadata and see basically what courts, what jurisdictions, what kind of cases were there, uh, and then kind of try to model this a little bit and, and see uh, what we can do, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I at least want to mention that there's actually quite a number of uh, similar use cases running on Neo4j. So um, uh, openlaws.eu is an... Um, European law engine, at least it used to use Neo4j. I'm not sure if they're still, they say it's running on a general Google index, um, but it used to use okay. Neo4j. Um, I remember kind of uh, working with them back in the days there in mm -hmm. Austria. Um, and then um, Ir Irina Feuerstein did uh, also an analysis of German law as, as such, and she has this uh, uh, graph of codes, uh, where the codes is, are basically the the legal codes, and there's a uh, public data set that she turned into CSVs for Neo4j as well. So, uh, so that's basically then uh, something that can be can be used as such. Right. Uh, so, uh, and uh, there are actually also in the UK there are people that manage basically court cases and the laws, and because UK is I think like the US case law. Uh, so you basically all the court decisions become part of the legal system, basically, and so you need to have all the court court decisions and their uh, the parties and how it was decided and what were the arguments and and things like that, because that's then later on used by other cases. So it becomes a really interesting um, network of uh, not just laws but also decisions that build upon each other as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's quite a number of of usages for that. I think if you also Google, like, I haven't tested it actually, but if you Google, like, Neo4j in law or legal, then you probably find a number of, of things. Cool, but let's get started. Let's just create a new Aura instance. Uh, logged into Aura. The UI changed a little bit. So if you've been with us a little bit, you see that now, like, instances and connect is here on the on the left for ORDB and ORDS, not on the top anymore. And, and it's a little bit cleaner as such. Yeah, it looks nice. And it looks good. And we can create our new database. Download our end file. Uh, uh, court cases. And then we click on continue. And then after a few seconds, our instance should have, I just rename it into court cases. So that we don't yeah. mess it up. Um, after two many. minutes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's just me. Um, after a few minutes, it should be uh, available. And until then, we can look at the CSV and, and look what the data looks like and then uh, take it from there as such. So what I did here is, let's see. Exactly. Um, so... Um, there is uh, the full data. So for instance, if we do, so we again use XSV, which is my favorite tool for uh, looking at CSV data because it's really nice and fast. So I just sample one file because that's like an 80 or 100 megabyte file. So it's yeah, not okay. helpful to open it and yeah, find yeah. it directly. Uh, so I just take one case here. So I, I just say XSV sample one. So it gives me one, uh, one sample here. 
Okay, uh, yeah, that's a lot here. of text. So, and, 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 and uh, you see that it starts with an, um, it has a doc ID, text, court, case number, short name, and, 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 and so on, right? So you basically, the doc ID is the starting point and the text, and then it continues with all the metadata here, right? Mm -hmm. So you see that's the doc ID here, this one? Yeah. Right? And then it starts with the text from here. So, and you see that it's the full, basically legal text of the case. Uh, this goes all the way until here where the quoting mark ends basically. Yeah, okay. Right? Well. And then we have the other bits of the metadata, right? So who against whom and, and, and so on. So what I could do here with XS3 uh, is uh, basically say, we select everything except for the second column, which is the text. Uh, so we don't ah, need to have the, yeah. the text necessarily in, in yeah, the true. And uh, so this is the English version. There's also a French version. Uh, so for those of you that speak French, there's also a French version of this uh, in the uh, in the download data set. Um, you should probably, uh, by the way, uh, Alex, you should probably share the uh, the link here. Yeah, this oh, link nice. I shared already. Okay, super. The Thank this you. one I shared. Yeah. Um, so you can download it from from that web page here, right? Ah. So you see all the uh, downloads. Connection issues you back okay um yep. so uh, you can download all the metadata as zip files and mm -hmm. then uh, basically also the pdfs themselves so you see it's much bigger in the pdfs right yeah. um and i think i downloaded the english csv uh, somewhere it says csv here uh, yeah yeah Right, so this is the metadata and this is the full data. So what you can do with XSV is basically select the first and the, the rest columns and then turn them into a file and then that's kind of ICI, ICJ, uh, International <laughs> Court of Justice. Another one. Not ICIJ. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, we can basically just say uh, CSV sample 10, uh, and then we can just look at a bunch of them and you see that it's much easier now to see them without all the text, right? So, and actually, yeah. if we even look at this uh, here, we can now see the um, yeah. court, case number, short name. So you see also that the same case comes up multiple times, right? Uh, so it's, it's different documents for the same case basically right mm -hmm. no, um, maybe the the progression over over time yeah it's different doc documents maybe. that have been uh, added what if documents like, okay yeah right uh, so uh the case full name applicant and respondent so who kind of applied for the court case and who is required to respond and then there are regions in europe or, or internationally uh, and then oh, okay. what date? Yeah. So this is actually from forty from forty seven. So it goes all the way back. Yeah. Uh, in cases, uh, right? Uh, kind of documentation doc type. What kind of collision? Well, I don't know what collision is. Stage. This is probably the like opening, and then probably arguments or uh, arguments and so on. Yeah. Opinion. Yeah. So kind of which stage was this? So we can probably created document nodes uh, that then are connected to the case node or something like that. And then basically give them like a uh, connection there. And then on the case, we can create the applicant respondent. Yeah. And then, um, so these states are for the documents, this as well. And then uh, there are versions, creative comments. And then this is just information on the document, right? So how many words, how many types, and how many characters are in there? So the uh, the types would be interesting. Uh, is I think perhaps like the legal or the the entities extracted, but unfortunately it was not like available anywhere. So we need to basically see, uh, and we can probably order the, these documents by date. So to give them an order, right? Uh, because there's no real ordering number within. No, the here, numbers right? always. We don't see. Now it changes, right? It's sort of like here it goes all the way to six, but there's no, there's no, <clears throat> yeah, like zero, zero, there's no one to, to 17 or yeah, something no, like that, right? Yeah. So, so, and also, over I guess here, stages is, is what it is. I, I think that's probably what it, mm. you know, different, different, um, different uh, time frame. So, yeah, but the um, stages are more like, uh, like what kind of interaction is this, right? Like, probably, oh, um, okay. this is probably the, 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 order 
uh, of the court, basically court order or something like that, mm-hmm. like the closing yeah. final one. Yeah. Right. But someone with legal background can probably uh, tell us a little know. bit more. Yeah. Uh, and and um, but this should give us uh, some data, basically, uh, where we can see who is who is that and and where are they from and did they fight a lot or not a lot or something like that, right? So we can see basically who has been participating uh, yeah. in these in these cases, right? So that's what I would like to try uh, to do. Uh, to to model this and import it, and then we see how far we get. Uh, mm-hmm. There's also another document which is similar, um, which is uh, proceedings of the. Uh, where does this start? This starts actually in 1923, so that's another data set that is ah, in okay. there. Uh, that was linked in the PDF. So each of those publications actually comes with a PDF as well. They call it like codebook. Um, which explains ah okay the that's data, like a collection right? so of which everything. is basically mm-hmm. yeah it's kind of explanation of the data the type of uh, the little oh, bit of the data I model in, introduction uh, what is okay. this about um, also sources and links and and how you read the files and descriptions of, of things and so on right so and maybe this explains um, what could explains what what the the stages yeah were. I try to find it in here let's let's open it and see actually. One second. Uh, some intermediate stages of refinement. Stage, stage, stage. It just says what's in there, but not. Mm-hmm. Ah, here. Ah, you're right, Alex. Ah, right. here we go. Yeah. So I just let's see. It starts description of variables. Okay. Uh, document of the t- text, the court. Case number, short name, full name, applicant, uh, country codes. There's also an explanation for the country codes in some table. Respondent, all the regions, dates. Doc type, judgment, advisory options, and orders. Collisions. Okay, decisions of the same type in the same proceedings of the same days. Okay, and then stage is what we just mentioned, right? Preliminary objections, merits, interventions, compensation. And the ICJ is very inconsistent. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. great. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good job. Uh, yeah. um, so, so this is something where either we can resolve it or it's something that uh, someone using the data can, can then look up. Yeah. Or we can turn this actually into a label if you wanted to, right? So we could actually... Uh, turn the document and add a label because these are like only three different val- values, right? Yeah. Uh, so we could actually, or four different values, you can actually add a label to the document. Uh, remind me to, to do that and then we can probably see yeah. that. Opinions are numbered, like these opinions, like primary, uh, this, this opinion. Somewhere is opinion, they're numbered. Languages, French or English. And then the year for the document, uh, minority, and then number of tokens and unique tokens. So that's all the number of unique words, basically. Um, mm-hmm. Plain tokenization, number of sentences, version, concept, and license. Okay, so we found it. Good. And here are all the country codes. Uh, I think they're still available also as a CSV, but uh, it's also in the yeah, what's it's also in the data, data yeah. right? And then there are entities as well. Uh, not that many, but um, let's see. So that's kind of the document. So there's a lot of detail in this in this document. Huh. Uh, so we can uh, take it as an additional input. So let's see, hopefully now our database is running. Yes, so we can open workspace here and uh, connect it. I just need to copy. I, I don't know if I still have the, this is the right password or if I just check it one second. Um, I'll just download, download it here. 
think it should be still the right one in my clipboard. Sure, yeah. So this is an empty database. So we just clean out uh, the things from last time from, from MoMA. Yep. And then we can get started. So let's see, International Court of Justice, International Court of Justice cases. So this is the file that we just looked at. Yep. And now we can start um, working on that. So one node we wanted to model is the document, right? Mm -hmm. um, so then we have a court or a case. Case, yeah. In a certain court, which in this case is the same court all the time. But then we have an applicant, basically, in country, which is an uh, applicant for this case. And then the other country is the respondent. Respondent. Um, what else did we have called case document? We have also the regions, but I'm um, not sure if we need to pull out the regions or not for the countries. Uh, document type, coalitions, languages. I think the language is always the same. Stage, we wanted to add stage, I think. Yeah, we can add stage as a, as a label um, as such. Hmm. I think that's already it. Right. So then we just need to map it. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Document of case. We want to call it like document of case, or do we want to do you want to call it uh, call it something else? Uh, also flip it around and say case has document, but I think yeah. I like it more this way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then court for the case, right? Yeah. Super, and then we can start mapping the thing, right? So let's start with um, adding the uh, data. So there actually there's a new feature in Data Importer that was just released last week. You probably don't yes. need it today, yeah. uh, but it's something that's quite useful. So if you want to try it out, uh, please try it. Let's, uh, let us know how it works for you. Mm -hmm. uh, imagine you had multiple different things in, in one file and you wanted to map it to different... Um, and notes, right? So we had, imagine, we had a good use case last last week, unfortunately. So one, one week too, with, too late. Yeah, exactly. The MoMA data, MoMA so, and the yeah. classifications, I think we wanted to pull out the classifications separately, right? So yeah. and um, where we could basically could have uh, pulled out only the photographs or something mm. like that, right? So exactly with the file filter, you can say which column should match what, right? So for instance, if you wanted, imagine we had a uh, language. Uh, Imagine we had like 17 different languages in here, right? So then we would say we would want only have the English ones, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Then this could be a filter uh, that we could apply here. And then we could do one English document, another French or something like that, right? Yeah. So it doesn't make so much sense, but in general, you get the, you get the idea, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's a new feature. Um, so let's see, we want to get the doc ID. Uh, case number is probably on the case. Short name, full name is on the case. The applicant respondent are also on the case. Uh, the date is from the document. Document type is from the document. I think collision and stage is also on the document. Opinion, language, year. Do you think that's on the stage, uh, on the case? The year? No, the collision, stage, opinion. Uh, no, because they change for the same case. So if you ah, look at yeah, yeah, again, yeah, you're right, you're right. Second. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, it's different lines. Uh, yeah, if yeah. you look here, like the first one, that's kind of the the first one are the documents. This is yeah. the case. This goes till line over here, right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. And then yeah. for for each document, you have a different uh, stage. So the stages yeah. are basic. Uh, sorry, the documents are basically what lawyers of the different parties submitted as. Um, okay. Yep. As things and 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 that's why the different or or what actually what came either from lawyers or what came from the the, the court themselves basically mm -hmm. as well right yep. so and you see that within the same case so it goes all the way up to here you have different stages different doc types 
and uh, the collision i think is yeah. on, only if it's like multiple on the same yeah and and i think it actually it might not even be from the lawyers it might be only issued from the from the court uh so so all the stuff is on the document i think um, yeah yeah you're right yeah right, so and then doc id is automatically selected as the id uh then we take our case uh, our properties are the case number, short name, and full name. I think that's about it, right? Mm -hmm. And our case number is our uh, ID, and it automatically maps the relationship here, right? So we, because you have only one file, yeah. um, it all, all automatically picks the file and then maps basically automatically uh, doc ID to his number, right? Uh, so for the applicant, we pick this was the applicant, right? So resp no, it's the this respondent. respondent. Uh, okay, respondent. Uh, respondent region and respondent subregion, I think. Yeah. And because we map it twice, as we've done several times, right? So we basically we want to have the type in the relationship type actually. Uh, but in the country, we want to call it the same, basically, right? So we just return turn, turn this into country code. Uh, this is our country, our, our region. And this is our sub-region. So we do it twice, basically. Um, so basically, all the countries are mapped to the same node in the, mm -hmm. um, in the data. But it's uh, so the, the properties on the on the nodes are the same, but they come from different sources as such, right? So if you look at at mapping, you see basically that code comes from respondent regions, comes from respondent regions, and and, and so on. Right? Um, so that we can unify them in one country node. Yeah, because you, you have only the countries... relationship is is defining <clears throat> if it's exactly. an applicant or a respondent. Exactly, and uh, the same we do the same for the applicant as well. Uh, so we had code. Uh, here we had region. And here we use the subregion. So it's the country in uh, the country in the in the in the graph database looks the same. Yeah. Uh, and we just have the different relationships, which are also automatically filled again uh, from applicant uh, to case number, basically, right? And then um, so this gets it maps it automatically for us. And then the last one is the court, uh, which is basically just the court uh, such, which is also automatically mapped for us. And then it looks pretty good, right? All the properties are mapped uh, here. Everything is green on the left side. And we could run a preview. Did we miss yeah. anything, Alex? No, I, I think that's all. Uh, I think the labels uh, we can do with post-processing. The labels yeah, yeah, from the stages exactly. you do as. Yeah. So let's just run a preview. So this should give us an understanding of what this looks like. And it looks like a graph, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be if you if you mess up the mapping, then it yeah. becomes like um, uh, independent nodes, right? So we have cases, documents, courts, and countries. And it's only one court, right? The ICJ. Uh, yeah. And then the uh, the red ones are the countries. So you see the different countries, like here is it Italy, Great Britain. Uh, this is actually one thing that is split. So it might be something that we might need to split up, right? Uh, yeah, that's like a down. mix. I think it's it's when one of our typical they... issues, right? So yeah. when people mix stuff in the same because their data model didn't allow for yeah for separate kind of splitting nodes. it up. Right. So, <clears throat> and uh, and so we basically need to do do it ourselves. Mm. But that's something that we've done multiple times already in the past. So you know the drill, actually, right? So we match it, we split it, and then we delete the old relationship um, if it's a different node, and then we uh, just connect it to the new nodes. Should make it be a big deal, right? So this is um, not available, country not available. So we can probably also delete this. Uh, yeah. Uh, Latin American and Caribbeans, Caret. So th th this is one of these uh, larger agencies, right? So it's not like a country, 
Ähm, ah, das war das wird der put it in the document. Ja, yeah, we like should probably have WHO called it not like countries but entity or something like that. And and uh, because in the PDF, if you remember. Well, we could let, let's maybe go back because we just didn't import it. We can say okay. let's let's do um, entity let's, or something. Let's like use that. the filter actually and do entity. Create a create an entity node and use the filter capabilities for right. these couple. So of we entities. had the countries here. Uh, yeah, and then these are the con the entities. Yeah. The, the the drawback is that we need to spell them out individually, so we can't. Um, With the filter, no. No, you can only do one basically. So uh, if you apply a filter here, uh, we could only do this by basically if we say uh, applicant is, for instance, if you say carrot, then it would only do this one basically. Oh. No. So we would have to do it oh, seven times or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll what I would, but I would, what I would say is probably we, that we can uh, turn this into entity instead of country, so it's more correct, basically. Um, oh, so is it for countries? I mean, wouldn't it better to split out the uh, the the uh, in post 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 processing to split could out also, the others uh, as a label. Yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate that you couldn't, you can't do filters on compl more complex, like a okay. list yeah. of names or stuff like that. And so, right? so currently yeah. it's only equality. And I don't think there was anything that had identified if it was a country or an entity in the um, in the file. Mm -hmm. You know, that would have been nice um, to to do. I mean, if. A region is not available, then maybe I don't know. Mm. Could that work? So you mean when when region is an A basically, then we do country. Yeah. Uh, when when region, then we do entity. Yeah. So let's see what when carrot is in here. Uh... So I think it was a big pen, and then we need to use carrot. A big pen. And then uh, I think this is the thing. Mm. Well, it's it. It at least is applicant, respondent, application region. Let's have a look at the what it looks like. So it has applicant is is carrot. For whatever reason, it didn't turn it into an. Oh, sorry. Uh, we don't want to turn this into access fee table because that's okay. It's better. Um, so applicant is carrot and um, respondent is actually not available. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so default against whom? Yeah. Um, so that's kind yeah. of this. Um, but the applicant region and the applicant oh, applic region are also empty. Yeah. Yeah. So good question. We could try this, right? So when we uh, basically say, um, <clears throat> maybe make a new node, maybe call it mm. entity, and keep the others as country. Yeah, let's let's try this. It's a good idea, and then we can still uh, we can still turn this into uh, we can delete ones that are not so. We wanted to say uh, region, applicant region is uh, NA, right? Yep. And we select now all the applicant ones, applicant, applicant. Actually, we don't only need to, to select the applicant. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, don't you're need right. The uh, and then we call it uh, entity. Oh, mm -hmm. Let's also call it code just for the. Uh, so, and this is also applicant. 
Mhm. Ein dann, wie du das sehen vor die Respondent das war. Entity. And respond. Und the file with the filter. Respondent region is NA. Oh, it always shows the how many matches, which is actually quite nice. Um, and entity, and we just need the respondent themselves, which we call code again. From to case number, right? Yep. Yeah. Code, 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 code. Applicant region is NA, respondent region is also NA. And here we, now we don't really need the file filter, it's just to, to speed it up, basically. Yeah. Um, so we could do this here as well. We could also say here applicant region is an A. Cool. So if we run the preview again, it should create the new types as well, mm -hmm. which are now can... colored dark brown. So which should be this here, right? So this is now yes. EcoSoc and IFAD, so it will carrot, uh, WHO, uh, uh, UNSC, UNGA, and, and cool. so on. UNESCO. Cool, nice that that worked. Cool, so we tried the new feature. So let's click on input <laughs> data. This was a good modeling uh, exercise. So it imported all the data, which is nice, right? So you can see for each of them, again, the Uh, the statement for creating the constraints and the statements for creating the data. Uh, this is for our uh, documents. And here, for instance, for the cases, it's much shorter, right? So because then it just takes all the records. For each record, it creates a case. And then sets the short name and the uh, full name. Uh, on that. Can you show what, it, uh, what it's doing with the filtering when we do entity? So this is kind of here, these uh, to skip. Uh, where it basically passes in the um, mm -hmm. uh, so this pa is passed in as a parameter so we should be able for entity I think it does yeah this IDs to oh no didn't, ah, yeah. sorry this year uh, the filter ex uh, exact match this is applied as an extra parameter basically mm -hmm. um, for the um, for the entity here and then I think for this one as well, um, where it basically also extracts the exact match okay. yep. for applicant region. Cool. Start exploring. So let's see if this shows our graph. So we have cases, country, courts, documents, and entities. And so this is just country and document. Uh, but what's much more interesting is basically um, so this is kind of just show me a graph, right? So kind of giving me a sample of some random, yeah. um, some random 50 or so uh, elements. Uh, but what would, would be, for instance, interesting is uh, which countries have uh, cases against, for instance, which entity, right? So basically, mm -hmm. we would say kind of which country is fighting against which entity in the court. Yeah. So, and then we have this NA. Or the other way around, we didn't specify a... Yeah, we didn't specify direction. I think that's yeah. even not possible in Bloom. That's something that they are adding in the future. Uh, I saw some preview of... Yeah. Oh, so okay. here, uh, for instance, we have a lot of NA countries without an code. This is really weird. Oh. <clears throat> okay, well... Okay. Maybe I think I said didn't they write something about uh, non countries that didn't exist anymore? 
Mm. Maybe that's something like Soviet Union or something mm. where it's not oh, it exactly, could be, yeah. that's no longer there okay. and then they hadn't I don't know. Also I think it picked the wrong text for country. It had subregion as, as text for country. So um oh and we also have the the um the same notes, you know, where there's also an entity for them. So we could actually delete these nodes that uh, are actually entities and are actually not countries. Right? Oh, okay. Why, why did it import them as countries? Because uh, it, we just said for the entities filter Ach, yeah, 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 of course. out the yeah, ones yeah. that are not but we, that are not entities, mm -hmm. but we on the other side, because you can't say not equal, so you can only yeah, have okay. exact match in, in yeah. a positive... Uh, I, see, yeah. I see, yes. Yeah. Um, so we need to uh, so but but what we could do is actually we can delete the countries that have no subregions right so we can say find our countries uh, where c dot uh, region region equals a return so that's nine right so which sounds a little bit like the um So that's kind of the, the ones that have no subregion, right? Yeah. Uh, which looks good. And so we can just delete them. It will also delete, well, maybe don't delete the NAs because that might, NAs could be the countries that are not. No, but that, that's code, right? So that's kind of. Ah, code. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, and that's then the country that should have not been imported in the first place, right? So, and if we. Rerun the search here. Let me just clear out the scene. Oh, no. Somehow there seem to be no country associated to these cases that have an entity, that, which is really weird, right? So if we have entity hmm. case. Maybe these were just generally appeal, uh, appeal, appeals. Uh, or orders from the court on something, right? So this yeah. is review judgment something. What is this? So it seems to be all petitions. Uh, yeah. So maybe they never touched a, with NA. touch a country. Hmm. But if I expand this here to expand so you only see the code and of case you don't have hmm. any other applicant or or yeah okay that's a little bit sad but still interesting right so it seems that the uh, entity cases have no countries attached to them okay but it's something that we've learned that we didn't know before right yep. so <laughs> so let's let's then try to country uh, case country uh, as you know, which countries yeah. uh, had court cases against them. Uh, right? So we have uh, Bahrain against the... So in, actually what we can do here is in text, we can also select multiple. Uh, so we also see uh, where are they located mm -hmm. as well. Um, so Western yes. Asia. So if he pulled out the regions, it could be actually interesting to see um, if there are more cases within a region or if there are more cases outside of a region. So if there's more cases between like Europe and let's say uh, South America or if all the, or most of the cases are actually in the same region, right? So because if you look at these few examples here, uh, there mostly in the same region, right? So Southeastern Asia here or Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe and, oh, here's in Russia and Western Africa, Asia, Asia. as well, right? So Georgia, I guess is this. Yeah. Uh, Legacy A, um, welcome, yeah. we are what we did is we imported the the court cases from the International Court of Justice into uh, Neo4j as a graph database, and now mm. are working on the model and 
play around with the with the findings. Now we're looking for who, which country is was uh, was uh, going against which other country, where, which regions uh, are most common um, uh, appearance, make most common appearances uh, in front of the court of justice, and mm. what what else we can find out. So this is an open data set we we found and we are working uh, in in the, in the modeling and in the, the the database a little bit now. Yeah. So and here uh, it looks that Great Britain is pretty active. So we can also look at the counts uh, in a second in in, in query. Mm -hmm. So Great Britain is pretty active. A lot so a lot of different cases, right? There's fisheries, nuclear tests. Oh no, that's not Great Britain. Uh, but uh, what other cases? Mining. Are here? What is this? Mining. Yeah, oil, yeah. Anglo. Uh, and, and some others. Right. Norway is also in here, maritime and fisheries with, with Great Britain. Yeah. Right. So, which is understandable. Yes, that's, yeah, yeah. East Timor between Portugal and Australia. Right. That was probably some of the former colonies or something. I have no Australian idea. and New Zealand nuclear tests. Yeah, good. Against what is this? France. That's so. France was also pretty active here. Yeah. So we can actually query this, right? So we can actually ask, find this pattern of country uh, to case, and and then we can say, basically say country code and country dot region, and then basically how often. What are the top 10 countries in, in terms of cases, right? That have so US is 22 cases, uh, GBR is uh, Great Britain is 14, Great Britain 14. France 13, uh, NIC, Nicaragua, uh, maybe Nicaragua, perhaps 13 cases. Interesting. Yeah. So we should probably at some point pull in the actual full names of the country, right? Germany, yeah, probably uh, Colombia. Um, yeah. Um, Belgium, Libya. Yeah. Right. So some of them are like uh, more trading cases. Some of them are probably more like like the nuclear cases. They are more about military usage mm -hmm. or like fighting against uh, that. Um, what we what we can also do here is basically, for instance, if we say um, country code. Okay. Uh, case and then uh, country. So this would only be like you, the US against other other countries, yeah. right? So you have the US in the middle here, and all the other cases with uh, all the cases of all the other countries, right? And if you look at it, it seems to be fifty-fifty almost in terms of respondent and uh, applicants, right? So if you look at this here, kind of it seems to be. Uh, We could filter this even some more. Way. Give it, give it a color. <clears throat> Do a. Uh, yep. So we can a... on the relationships. We can. That's yeah. a good point. So we can do applicant. Uh, let's say red and respondent blue or so. Mm -hmm. And this should give us. That's a really good point. So we see actually the distribution of. Yeah, a little bit more respondent uh, than applicant. I think. But we can also query it, right? So we can also say we put in the relationship type here and also return the uh, basically uh, type of R type. So we see that 40 times the America uh, US has been respondent and no. uh, eight times uh, applicant. Oh, yeah, and so that's, that's also that we can basically just pull in the relationship and the relationship type and then, yeah. or just filter that, right? So we can yeah, also yeah. just say we want to see only the applicants or also only the respondents uh, such, right? Yeah. Um, if we want to uh, do the full pattern here, it's also something that we can do, um, which is basically we continue this um, to a second country. 
-hmm. and see if you want to see who has been most frequently basically uh, going against each other. <laughs> uh, I don't even see that it's. Uh, yeah, whoever Cree is. Cree. Good question. Uh, in, in America, so we can actually look it up in the in our PDF. In the list. Sorry, Ka. Oh, yeah. you probably yeah. import this, this could have, list could have of, thought of this, yeah. Code. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, Soviet Union is, for instance, SUN. So, because I saw SUN before somewhere. Ah, okay. So, um, NAs are just clearly data problems here. Yeah. Right, so, they have uh, look at Yugoslavia and Czechoslovakia, I think, probably twice in here. One as a hmm. country and then the individual uh, countries that came out of the split but that's something i think the, this list should be available as a csv as well they have it also online mm -hmm. uh, and this list yeah, is yeah, and also available as a csv so we could have i mean this is this is public it. i mean this is i think the, the standard yeah. way so if yeah iso right. iso standard but way. it's really interesting that costa rica and the us fought Oh no, no sorry, Costa Rica and, and, and Nicaragua actually so this yeah. were probably this moment more neighbor dispute, neighbor problems. Disputes, right? So yeah. but what we can do is basically we can collect uh, CA dot uh, support uh, call it name or what was the case number full what are name. You looking for? Oh, full name. Full name the uh, what the case was about. Ah, yeah. Uh, Whaling, okay. No, this is... Oh, sorry. Oh, this uh, is different. No, I just... Uh, I inserted it in the wrong place. Ah, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, comma. Yeah, perfect. His name. So, yeah, okay. so ah, this is yeah. maritime, maritime land and... Uh, border. So these are mostly border disputes and border maritime disputes. Yeah. Yeah. disputes. Yeah, construction of a road. Yeah, okay. Treaty violations between Iran and US. Mm -hmm. um, Soviet Union versus the US aircraft aerial incidents. Yeah, okay. So we're overfly or something. India and Pakistan is also. Uh, Expected because they are like border disputes and yeah, other and aerial and incident. I guess this is some military stuff where mm. airplanes Honduras yeah. versus Nicaragua, uh, also like border and maritime. Mm. So, lots of border disputes, maritime disputes, and 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 then some like military or I don't know, as well. Uh, so that's actually interesting. So what we could uh, do in principle is take these countries that are more frequently uh, interacting with each other and say uh, we could create an like uh, additional relationship that creates a country to country relationship uh, where we can uh, basically then see how often they basically had cases against each other, right? So if we basically say um, you just take the country and see two, uh, and then uh, where frequency is greater than we have greater or equal three or so, mm -hmm. and we see how many rows we get from this sixteen, right? So we could create an or create a relationship disputes or something like that, right? Set D dot frequency. Um, so we should get 16 relationships between countries um, as addition. So, and if we dismiss, clear the scene here. And only pull the disputes relationships. We have these countries that dispute most frequently, mm -hmm. basically, right? So we can basically yeah. also say on the relationships, 
disputes. Uh, you can, for instance, say the, the size is based on a rule-based one. Yeah. Um, where we basically say this is a range and the smallest one is 0.5 and the biggest one is 4x or something like that. And if you say apply, you see that it changes. It's with based on the on the frequency, for instance, right? Or you could yep. also we could also say the text also includes the frequency, and then we see the the count actually uh, as well, right? So that's something where we then can create a derived version of the graph that shows us as additional information. Yeah. As such, right? Yeah. See the big, the big. Uh, uh, well. Enemies is maybe the wrong word, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people that have reasons to yeah. dispute, right? So, which is mostly yeah. border things and uh, other aspects as well. Um, the other thing that we wanted to do is kind of to add uh, to the document the. Uh, the, the state? The stage, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, so was NA actually in valid stage or was NA just not available? Uh, I don't remember it was a valid stage. Stage. Yeah. Uh, P O M E I N and C O no NA is not a valid stage. So what what we can do is basically uh, uh, where N dot stage is not a right mm -hmm. for the stages basically that we have and then we could either do it manually we could say uh, uh where n dot stage equals me set n uh so what is it merits uh oops. So this is merits. Then the other one was PO preliminary objection. Um, so we we are creating additional labels. Additional labels on the uh, on the individual nodes here. So for... exactly, IN is intervention. Oh, sorry. Well, that shouldn't shouldn't change, right? It should not change, but uh, there used to be a time when the limit actually NCO is compensation. So we can now see basically, for instance, how many preliminary objections were in the data, for instance, right? Uh, yeah. So 424 preliminary objections. And then you could also use that as additional color or highlight or, or something like exactly. that in the cases, yeah. right? So in the, in the visualization. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing, we're a little bit out of time. I don't know where the time went today. <laughs> we didn't uh, pedal, but uh, time went by pretty quickly. But the, the other thing that we can do is basically um, remember the few countries that we had that had multiple entries. Yes. Um, yeah. So we would like usual, we would split them uh, where c dot code they, they divided with a hy hyphen hy hyphen right so I think that was what it was inverse n dot code yeah oh, it's only three of them okay so basically oh really okay well that's uh, easy <laughs> right so well it um, doesn't yeah. so what we would do is basically we would split uh problem is that we have to do it twice because of the relationship types basically. Uh, yeah. uh so split and not code on hyphen and then um we would also need to split the regions and the subregions basically. Uh Uh, in node region on pipe. 
Let's go to use different symbols for splitting, <laughs> right? Uh, S regions mm. and split n dot sub region. It's also pipe simple, right? It's also pipe, yeah. Uh, and uh, sub regions. So, and then what, because you need to access all the three arrays, basically the first, the second, and the third element, we would not unwind the codes themselves, but we would just unwind a range from zero to length of codes minus one it's index. And then we can actually check it uh, with n limit one. Uh, return uh, basic codes from index uh, regions of index and uh, sub regions. Oops. Think size. So that's just kind of our split now, right? Mm, perfect. So yeah. we would also see that this is correct. And then what we would do is basically. Um, Say, um, would match this country to case where it's basically an respondent. Uh, right. Um, this here. And then we would uh, do two things. You would create a new node or uh, find or create a new node, right? Uh, on code, uh, codes of IDX. And then on create set r dot region is region set IDX. So and r dot sub region equals this. Mm -hmm. Only if we, if the country doesn't exist yet, right? So it would quite to, Try to get or create a country, and then uh, we would uh, create a relationship from this country to this case as a respondent. And then we would uh, delete uh, the old relationship. We would create a new country, would connect the new country to the code, yeah. to the case, and delete the old relationship of the mixed one, right? And uh, then we do this for each of them as such. So one for respondent and one for applicant. And then uh, now we should have no document, uh, no countries anymore that have an Oh, we did for, forgot to delete the. Uh, you need. We forgot to group. delete the node actually. Yeah. Yeah, we forgot to delete the group. So, so they should still be there, uh, but they should have no relationships anymore. Yeah. And so, if I click on this, uh, it doesn't have any relationships anymore. So we can just basically delete them, and and then these are all these countries are gone. And they are now sorted into the regular, <clears throat> into the regular thing. Yeah, as such. You can check it now. You, you can look for cases that have more than one. Um, oh yeah, a really good or, point. Or respondent. Uh, and then we we should see case, what? and then we say um, country. Let's say applicant. And then, or we can actually say uh, where size of greater than one, right? Hmm. There were so many, I think. And we count. Oh, because there were not so many, uh, right? Yeah. So. This is basically, it has now these multiple applicants. Yeah, right? here so we see three applicants, basically. Three applicants, Egypt, uh, Bahrain, Bahrain guess, and, and the last one, I don't know. Armenia, no, I, I no, don't know. Ish, uh, well, yeah. yeah, but many of the Soviet republics are actually, 
or R is uh, is, it, is not a good. <laughs> yeah. So A R E, right? A R E. Oh, oh. United Arab uh, Emirates. Yeah, yeah, of course that makes makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. So and they are uh, appealing against Qatar, Qatar basically. Mm -hmm. Something air services transit agreement. Yeah. And it also says here in the. It would have said here, yeah. <clears throat> right, but that's kind of how you could uh, then split this uh, data into multiple. Cool. Cool. This was right. this was interesting. So uh, interesting, yeah. So, so and of course there's more, right? So if you pull in the text and extract the entities and like all the other things, so that's something that you can also do. Is basically. If you had imported text, you could have done NLP on 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 the sure. on the actual yep. text and, <clears throat> and pull out more uh, information of the text itself. So you would see kind of kind of what locations or what people or what uh, other things have been part of the of the documents yep. as well. I mean, we could we, there was a possibility to do a little bit of it when we when you look for some certain keywords like border or mm -hmm. mining or fishing or something. If it's if it's in the mm. actual name, but it's not as not as Obvious, clear, yeah. probably, and not as not as yeah. decisive. So, um, yeah, or you know. oh, like locations, you could pull out locations, for instance, that yeah. would be interesting, yeah. right? And or other participants on the, uh, if there are like other countries mentioned or uh, organizations mm -hmm. mentioned or something like that. So that could be something that would be interesting on an on an LMP yeah. uh, usage. Cool. Yeah. Good one. Good one indeed. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for, for joining and, and watching. Again, uh, always invitations. If you see something like this and think, oh, this could be interesting, uh, then please do let us know. Um, we're always um, looking for, for some data set we can, we can have fun with. Yep. Um, next week, we'll have to skip because Michael is out yeah. at the university giving a lecture. No, so, next week is actually FOSTEM. So uh, let, let me just oh, pull this up. So uh, FOSTEM 2023. And uh, we are doing a graph processing uh, dev room. So there's a graph database, graph processing dev room. Ah, and cool. uh, there's <clears throat> graph systems and algorithms here. And this is our schedule. So we have a bunch of folks from Neo4j, but also other folks that do graph visualization and large graph. Uh, um, benchmarks and, and other things as well. So uh, definitely uh, yeah. worth so, coming. So if you're in Benelux or in Europe or you're coming to post them, then that's definitely something uh, to come by. Uh, come by, for. definitely. If you want to meet Michael, say hi. Yep. Um, and um, if you're in Brussels or around the area, it's not so far. Yeah. So then stop by. Um, yeah. That, so that's why no no Monday stream um uh, next next week um in the meantime tomorrow i'll have um crosser so knowledge graphs with um, drug discovery or uh, healthcare life sciences um uh, space so that should be interesting uh on wednesday is the final episode of the graphql book club so uh nine like chapter nine um where we talk about advanced yeah. GraphQL um, uh, and some you know, wrap it up. We will raffle one final copy of the book signed by Will. So if you tune in live nice. on, on Wednesday, you can win uh, win a signed, cool. copy, signed of, copy of of the book. And on Thursday, another book. Uh, I'll present another book um, on uh, graph data processing with Cipher uh, with my colleague Ravi Antapu, who wrote the book uh, that's currently out on O'Reilly. So um, yeah. Busy, busy week, uh, full full schedule, and then lots of other things. Always check our events schedule. More it's coming late there. next week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, just check check out those. Cool. Yep, sounds good. All right, cool. Uh, thank you very Go much on. for watching, and um, yeah, I hope to see you uh, on one of the streams this week or uh, somewhere else on the forums, on the Discord, um, in Twitter, or wherever you like. And yeah. Uh, have a good good Monday, good rest of your week. Well, it just be began for most of us, so <laughs> have a good yeah, exactly good, good, uh, good start Still to whole week to, to come. Week. Exactly, and exactly. Uh, yeah, we hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Cool. Take care, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.